Hey, how's it going, folks? My name is Jose Garcia here at Design Visionaries uh, at DV. I am the NX to Creo and Creo to NX expert. Uh, so, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about Creo Parametric uh, and how you share relations with another part. This seems to be a pretty popular thing in NX. Uh, and since we do Creo training as well, uh, we've gotten that question on how you can share relations and expressions from one parts to another in Creo Parametric. For the longest time, I've heard people say that this is not possible, uh, but uh, let's see how we do it. You might learn something new on this one. So I have this flange here, a uh, very basic shape, nothing too crazy, uh, but what I want to do is I want to make a gasket uh, that fits right here. Now I want to take into consideration the uh, outer diameter here, right? I also want to do the bolt circle diameter. Uh, and, you know, I'll leave it for you for homework. You can also figure out a way to tie in this edge right here, okay? Uh, now, I have tied these uh, values here to parameters. So if I go over into the relations dialog here, uh, you can see that I have the bolt circle center line there, the hole diameter. Uh, and the gasket face diameter, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna use these three here to help me create the geometry that needs to go on this face right here, all right? So in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is you need to create an assembly. Now, you actually don't have to assemble these items together. You really only need the assembly for a specific command. Afterwards, you can close it, you can do whatever you want with it, uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and create a new assembly by hitting the file new here. I'll go to the assembly here, uh, and you know, I'll just call it test underscore assembly there. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. All right. Uh, now, the assembly for now, we're going to leave it blank. We're not going to use it. Uh, from here, I'm going to create the second part file uh, that is going to share the parameters uh, you know, from one part to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and hit File New here. I'll do a part, and this one is going to be called the gasket. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit OK there. So I want to bring in the parameters from the flange into the gasket part. Okay, now in order to do that, you need to switch back to the assembly. So I can hit this little window. Uh, button here and I can go back to the test assembly here, okay? Then you need to go over into tools and then you need to go over into the relations menu here. So you need to be in the assembly in order for this to work, okay? So once you hit relations there, there's a little show drop down here that you can click on and there's one that says show session ID, okay? So click it. Then you get the menu manager over here. So what you're trying to find is the session ID of the uh, of the flange underscore one. Right? That's what our part is called. So I'm going to go ahead and select a part here. So I'm looking for the session ID of a part. Uh, and of course, I can either pick it. If it was in the assembly tree here, I can pick it from there. Since I don't have it in there, I'm just going to go ahead and hit name, all right? So you can see that this menu comes up and I want to know the uh, session ID of this flange here. So I'll go ahead and click flange and I'll hit open. Uh, and it looks like it says model flange PRT has session ID uh, zero. So let me confirm that this is the correct part here. Uh, yep, there it is, flange.prt. Okay, good. So we can see that our flange has a session ID of zero. That's what it spit out. So we need that number in order to borrow the expressions from that part. Okay, so now we can go to the actual gasket.prt and in order to bring in those parameters and relations, we can go over into the tools section there and then we're going to go back to the relations here. Okay, and then from here, you have to type in 
the name that you want to assign in the gasket. And, you know, for purposes of this exercise, we'll keep all the names the same. Okay, so I'll go ahead and type in bolt underscore circle underscore center line equals. Okay, now you have to type in the name of the parameter that is in the flange, which is the same name, bolt underscore circle underscore center line. Then you have to use a colon, okay, and then you enter the session ID number, which in this case was zero, like that, okay? Now there are two more that we are going to retrieve, but let's check to make sure that this worked. So if I hit the execute verify relations, you can see that it says relations have been successfully verified. And if you rewind the video, okay, you will see that the bolt circle center line was indeed 14.5 over in the flange. Okay, so let's bring in the whole diameter. So I'll type in whole underscore diameter. Remember, this is the name of the parameter that I'm assigning to uh, the parameter in the gasket, right? It could be whatever you want, but I'm just keeping it the same for simplicity purposes. Uh, so whole underscore diameter equals, right? Whole underscore diameter colon zero, right? That's the session ID. So let's verify that again. And sure enough, you can see relations have been successfully verified, right? And of course, we're missing one final one, and that is gasket underscore face underscore diameter equals gasket underscore face underscore diameter colon zero, okay? I'll hit verify relations, and those are the three variables that we created in the flange one, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay on this. Uh, brought in those expressions. And now I can start making my piece, all right? So I'll go very quickly here, I'll hit extrude, and I'll just show you that all of these uh, parameters got brought in successfully, right? So this is my gasket face diameter. So I'll do gasket underscore, oops, underscore face, underscore diameter. It says, do you wanna add this? I'll say yes, okay. And then I'll hit okay on that. And you know, for the thickness, let's say there's gonna be, uh, I don't know, maybe 50 thou there. All right, I'll hit okay on that. And of course I can place my hole here, right? So I'll go ahead and select a face where I wanna put the hole. This is gonna be uh, diametral. And then the offset reference is gonna be a little tricky here, but I think I can get it if it, uh, if it allows me to, let's see. Let me try to drag this over. It looks like I'm not gonna have good success with that. So I'm very quickly gonna make a datum axis here. I don't see the datum axis. Maybe I'm crazy, but uh, is that the datum axis right there? I can't really tell. Yeah, it looks like it's in there. It's kind of hard to see since this is so thin. So let's try that again. I'll put a hole there. I'll change this over to diameter. Let's drag this little guy a little bit closer here. Let's see what we got. Uh, uh, there it is. Okay, good, there's axis number one. And of course, uh, the datum, we'll just choose this right plane there. The diameter, okay, it's gonna be bolt underscore circle underscore center line, right? Do you wanna add this? Yes, I do, and the angle is going to be zero. If I was really picky, I could also assign a variable to the angle, okay? Uh, the diameter, okay, this is gonna be whole underscore diameter, right? Do you want to add this as a relation? Yes, I do. And of course, this guy here is going to be set uh, through all. All right, so let's just set that. And there we go, hit OK, and there you have it. Now, you can already see some ways to maybe make this a little bit more streamlined as well. Uh, if you recall the flange part here, it only has three variables, but it doesn't have a variable to signify how many instances we have here. Um, you know, you can get really, really picky with this. And of course you can assign an instance to the pattern members. You can also show the P number for the pattern instances and share that with the other part. Okay, so that's just another way of improving this process. Uh, but I'll go ahead and do a manual pattern here using the, the number instead of a variable. Uh, so I'll do an axis. Of course the axis is really small, but I'll go ahead and put it there. And of course, this guy here is going to be 
eight. We'll set the angular extent. And there you have it. Okay. Very nice and easy. Okay. Now, I also did not tie a variable to the diameter here, which I could have done, right? But, uh, you know, this is just a simple exercise. I don't want to waste too much of your time here. So I recall that that hole is nine inches. So I'll just make it very quickly, just like that, holding the control key, so like both of those. Uh, the diameter here is going to be nine. Uh, and of course, the depth, we'll just go ahead and set it to do all. All right, so there's our gasket. Now, let's put these things together and then let's change one of the parameters to see if our gasket changes. I think you can already tell it is going to change, but let's find out. I'll go ahead and go back to the test assembly here and I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this very quickly. Okay, so here's my flange.prt. We'll do a default for this one, okay, just like that. And then we'll assemble the gasket here. Okay, so we're going to do a coincident uh, between this flat face here and this face here. We'll also do a coincident between the uh, center line of that guy and the center line of this guy. And I don't want to allow assumptions. I'll turn that off because I want to lock the holes in. I'll do one more constraint between this hole here and that hole there. And there we go, all right? It looks like it chose oriented. I guess I'll change it to coincident very quickly. I'm a big fan of coincident. It does everything that you need it to do. It's pretty nice. This is fully constrained now. We can see, right? So we can go ahead and hit okay. Uh, and of course you can see that this thing uh, is meeting perfectly with that because of course it's driven by the variables, okay? But what if we go back to the flange here and say, well, you know what, maybe this, bolt circle center line here it needs to be different maybe it needs to be pushed out more uh, we can test that very quickly by going over into the relations here uh, and changing the bolt circle center line right let's say it now needs to be you know 15.25 right and maybe the whole diameter needs to be say 0.75 right i'm going to go ahead and hit okay on this of course i do need to regenerate i can hit control g there and you can clearly see that there was a substantial change here. The holes not only are smaller, but the bolt circle center line also got pushed out further. If we go back to the assembly though, we start to see that it's not really lining up all that great. Well, if you know anything about Creo, you need to regenerate it to see those changes. So if I hit Control G, you can see that sure enough, the gasket also updated very nicely, okay? For the longest time, I've heard people say that this is not possible. You cannot share expressions from one part to another. Well, I'm here to you know get rid of that notion. You can do it. You just need to know how. All right. So hopefully you learned something here. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.